when I think of sales, I think it's all related to social. You know, uh, social, the first thing that comes to me is social media, okay? And that probably comes to many. But when I really thought through it, it's the ability to connect with a stranger and start mm-hmm. developing relationships via LinkedIn, via Facebook, and also via the phone. It's all about human conversation. Welcome to the Making Sales Social Podcast, featuring the top voices in sales and marketing. Join hosts Bryn Tillman and Bill McCormick as they discuss the best tips and strategies they are teaching their clients so you can leverage them for your own virtual and social selling. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play. Here are your hosts, Bryn Tillman and Bill McCormick. Hey everyone, welcome to Making Sales Social. I'm Bill McCormick. I'm Bryn Tillman. So Bryn, who's joining us today? I'm excited. We have Nancy Calabrese, who I think is probably one of the top inside sales management consultants. I have been following her for years and years. We've been connected for about two or three years on LinkedIn, but we finally really connected and got to know each other. And and Bill, I think you've known her even longer than I have. Oh, and we're both a part of Women's Sales Pros. So Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so excited having just had uh, having podcast with the two of you and now I get to do it again. So thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. We're thrilled. Tell us a little bit about you and your business. So one of a kind sales is uh, our company. And what we do is we do the work that almost everyone hates doing, which is we love cold calling. And, you know, typically when we work with our clients, it's uh, because they're frustrated. They don't have enough leads in their pipeline. They hate picking up the phone. So it typically doesn't get done. And then finally, you know, anyone in sales, we're always worried about, are we going to hit our goals. So we come in as that inside sales engine, if you would. Um, We do everything from data management to launching the campaign to developing and nurturing uh, relationships with prospects so that at the right time we convert them. So, yep, we love cold calling and I'll stick to it. Four words that you'll probably never, ever hear on Making Sales Social ever again. You've heard them here. (laughs) We love cold calling. So yes. this is going to be a great, great episode. Yes. So we start every podcast by asking the same question of every guest, Nancy. What does making sales social mean to you? You know, it was interesting. I was thinking about that. And um, when I think of sales, I think it's all related to social. You know, uh, social, the first thing that comes to me is social media. Okay, and that probably comes to many. But when I really thought through it, it's the ability to connect with a stranger and start Mm -hmm. developing relationships via LinkedIn, via Facebook, and also via the phone. It's all about human conversation. So if you Mm -hmm. uh, connect socially, you're doing it in email form, right, or text form. Said, and if you connect the way we do it, it's just, you know, using a tool to engage in a conversation. So I don't know if that answered your yeah, question. Yeah, that's great. Yep. It is. It's great. I'm curious, how can cold calling be social? Yeah, great question. Oh, I love it. You know, I, I'm just shocked that people are so reluctant. It's, it's look, at, look at the three of us right now. We're having fun. Mm -hmm. Right. If I had you on the phone, why couldn't I have a similar conversation? And what you do is in for us, we have to really pay attention to our tonality, our vocality and make sure that we, we are expressing 
uh, what we need to say in a professional way to get that person to respond to us. I, I mean, and that's all developing a social relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You speak with, a, uh, if, if you go to a networking event, you're shaking somebody's hand, right? And then you start engaging in a conversation. When you reach out on LinkedIn, um, you're looking for an opportunity to connect. And initially it starts with, you know, the texting back and forth, and then it ultimately goes to the human conversation, you know? I want to build on this because I think okay. it's so interesting. When you're cold calling, it's a little bit different than LinkedIn. For example, if you connect with someone on LinkedIn or engage, they can vet you first before responding. They can look at your profile, they can learn about you and make a decision on whether or not they want to respond. Right. How do you get, if you get someone that answers a call, I we ask both questions, that picks up the phone and the voicemail, what can you do that gets them curious or interesting enough to want to socialize, to want to have that conversation in the making sales social kind of way? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, my advice is always be different. If, you know, we have a pre preconceived notion of how salespeople conduct their business. What will they expect you to say? So if I go in and I ask for you and I go in and say, hi, Bryn, my name is Nancy Calabrese. I'm the founder of One of a Kind Sales. What happens as soon as you hear that? What's going up? I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't have the time right now. Uh, yeah. Right. Boundaries. Right. It's the, the yeah, sales yeah, yeah. wall. Right. right. And, and, and they're thinking, Bryn, you're thinking, and Bill, you're thinking, how, how can I get this one off the phone? How quickly? Right. So when you deliberately open a conversation by saying something that they don't expect, they're going to say, huh? So my, my go in is hi, Nancy Calabrese, Bryn, we don't know each other. And that is an icebreaker in and of itself calling the elephant out in the room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how it works. And then by continuing to, you know, again, we use our tone and our voice. We've got to match the tone and voice of the person that we're speaking with. They're, they're listening to themselves. So there's a lot of psychology involved in this, which really makes it interesting. What do you do on the voicemail that gets them to return a call? Well, we don't do uh, a, an information dump, that's for sure. And it's funny, great question, because I, and I'm sure all of us here have gotten voicemail messages that tell you everything. This is what we do. This is why you should buy from us, blah, blah, blah. And when I get one of those, I forward it to my team and I, and I say, why won't I return their call? And, you know, they, they all know uh, you want to be curious, right? Bryn, Nancy Calabrese, uh, your name came up in a conversation, motivated me to give you a call. Here's my number. Now you're going to call back and Bill, you'll call back and they'll say, well, who gave you my name? It could be me. It could be Tim. You know, I, I mean, uh, not many people do that, but you want to get them to call back. That's actually some of our text on LinkedIn, like almost exactly your name. Great. Came up. Great. She, you know, curate curiosity, get the pug tilt. We get, know, yeah, know, we, we want we, the we pug tilt. About, we, we, we talk about content having to, to resonate, create curiosity, teach them something new, think differently and raise their hand and ask for more. So the curiosity definitely is there. The, hey, your name came up in a conversation authentically being able to say that, of course, you just don't right. want to, because here's what I can see as salespeople, we're always looking for the easy off. And so people are just, oh, I'll just start saying that to every voicemail I leave. No, don't do that unless it's actually uh -huh. happened. Right. Right. right? Yeah. So, so that's important because then people will call back. It's like, I want to know who are you talking to about me and what did they say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you never want to lie. I mean, Right, you just right. Don't lie. And, you know, sometimes uh, my callers might, uh, one caller in particular, he'll say, Hi, 
My name is Ed. This is a cold call. If you'd like to hang up at this point, that's fine. And if not, can you give me 30 seconds? I'll let you know why I'm calling. Boom, boom, boom. He gets very few hangups. As a matter of fact, they laugh. I had a great article on LinkedIn. It did really well because I, I talked about how I was a victim of cold calling. And this guy cold called me from Texas, but he called it out. In the, I mean, right in the beginning. And he, but he knew what he wanted to say. He was the CEO of the company. So it was kind of a different situation. But he had right. done his research. He knew some things. He gave extreme value up front. So it sounds like social selling and, and what you're doing in, in cold calling, there, there are some real congruencies here. Yeah. How, how do you provide value in a, in, in a cold call so you don't get that, that hang up right away? And so you're not information dumping. A cold call is a discovery. Our goal, two, two goals to make sure we're speaking with the right person, the decision maker. And if so, our approach is to learn, are they experiencing any of the problems or do they have any, any pain as it relates to the services we can provide them with, okay? So for instance, um, you know, if they're frustrated that they don't have enough qualified leads in their pipeline. It's all about them. We go into zero sell mode. It's interesting because we believe you have to earn the right to get that answer. What do you do to build enough credibility that they're willing to answer that for you? Again, it, it goes back to the use of our voice. And we ask permission, by the way, you know, can you give me 30 seconds? I'll let you know why I'm calling. If it makes sense, we'll continue. Is that okay? It's weird that I would ever even say cold calling is aligned with our social selling philosophy. Yeah. Well, you know, the only difference is when you do social selling, you're not face to face an email, it's content. And if they blow you off, they blow you off. Not everybody is going to be a customer, right? But we love the permission based. We're permission based on social too. Hmm. Are you sure that we're working in different businesses? It's funny. No, it's funny. So the, I can, I, if I could just get like kind of one more thing on the voicemail, because most everything, especially today when people are on their cell phones, many, many calls are going into voicemail more than ever before. What, right. What's one tip you could give someone leaving a voicemail that gets a response, that gets them to call back? Yeah. Um, again, well, what we do is, you know, you can't expect one voicemail, you're going to get a response. You know, that's not human nature. And it typically, just generally, it takes eight to 12 touches for somebody, a C-suite person to pay attention to you. So our messages are, uh, we have a four-week cadence. And so in a four-week time, they're going to get at least four voice messages. But the last one typically will trigger, trigger a response one way or the other. And, and we go in with, look, we don't want to be a pest. Obviously, ABC is not uh, important to you. Here's our contact in information. We might embed some collateral, and we won't be in touch for a while. And the fact that we're telling them we're going away politely, we're not going to badger them, very often gets a return call. So I don't know if that helps. Yeah. Right. What are, You said collateral. What about providing insights? Do you provide any value to them so that they get to test drive what it is that you do a little bit before? Because that's a big piece of what we do. And I'm just curious if that translates into the call. So when language. you say test drive, basically a free uh, trial? An ebook. No, no. Something where they get to experience us. Yes. Um, actually, I'm going to be publishing a book shortly that we will include um, in that, but we, we do attach links to articles that we, we know, you know, nobody likes cold calling, but yet it's a function in the sales role. It has to be done. It's another channel, right. Um, to, a, a complete sales plan, if you would. And so the information that we share are tools, the how to, Okay, you're not interested in speaking with us right now. I get it. But here's something that might help you in your journey to get you and your team to be more productive. And you do that through email? Uh, we do it through the email, through our CRM. Correct. Yeah. So there's a call and an email follow up. Correct. Do you bring social into it at all? Connecting and touch some of those eight to 10, 12 
touches on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I absolutely like, for instance, um, a general rule of thumb, and I, I'm sure you're with me on this. If I have any appointment scheduled, I connect with them on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Appreciate, you know, look forward to our time. Um, and yeah, it's just another channel, you know, in, in prospecting, there's, there's so much available to us these days, mm -hmm. right? From a technology mm -hmm. point of view and, and still the phone, you know, mm -hmm. I still say it's tried and true. And like any other medium, if you will, it takes time to develop mm -hmm. relationship. It doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. And I think it's so good because so many people that are listening and watching this are, are in sales roles mm -hmm. and they have a, they're in a sales process where they have to call, you know, it's part of their evaluation. Like, are you doing 80 to 80 to hundred dials a week or a day or however, whatever that looks like. So I think that this is so good. It gives some, some really good framework around that. I'm curious about, about numbers, about percentages, because you hear all kinds of things. The last thing I saw was, I, I think the, the response rate for, for cold calling is like 0.3%. I don't know where that came from. I'm curious what kind of response rate you're seeing and follow-up question, if you've seen it change since the pandemic hit last year. Yeah. So here's my issue with how cold calling gets a bad rap. See, in cold calling, you're way more efficient. You're going to make way more dials, more attempts. And yet they look at, oh, but it only yielded XYZ appointments and the percentages are low. I use the analogy for salespeople and everybody listening. Have you ever counted how many hands you'd have to shake until a prospect converts to a first time appointment? It's the same, except we were able to do it more. I'm very targeted. So I say you look at the quality of the appointments and whether or not these appointments are leading to new business versus the quantity. And it will vary from industry to industry. And that's a fact. You know, um, I'm often asked, well, are you going to guarantee me? How many, how many will I see? I have no idea until we get into their world and start communicating with their prospects. And you know, um, the first go around, a first conversation isn't new business. It's probably the steps to building and nurturing a relationship. And having that system in place throughout the year will allow you to be in front of these folks. They'll remember you and convert. So in a roundabout way, I'm trying to answer your question. Um, it does work. Uh, I know it for a fact. And anybody that is not doing this is leaving money on the table because somebody is out there picking up the phone, getting in front of the same organization. Um, as it relates to the pandemic, you know, initially when it hit, I had a couple of clients that were like deer in front of headlights. And I, I, my approach was, no, this is not the time to stall. You have to go into it forward thinking. Yeah. And you have to make some changes, right? We've all had to adapt during this time. There was uh, the, the big objection. You're not going to be able to reach anyone. The, uh, the study shows that executives, even if their voicemail was not forwarded to their mobile or to their house, they check their voicemail nine times a day. So we had no reduction in the amount or our ability to set appointments throughout this year. It, it just didn't impact it. Not the way they thought. And, you know, frankly, in the early days, people were relieved to speak to other people. You know, we were all in this together, right? Mm -hmm. So it didn't impact it. Wow. So that that's eye opening. So I'm I'm learning some stuff for sure today. And, and so this has been been really, really good. So as we as we're kind of winding down, Nancy, let, let's talk practicality. One of the things we, we ask a lot of our of our guests are is around this idea of consistency. And what do you recommend that a sales rep that's listening to this do that a, a tactic or a strategy that if they do it on a regular basis consistently will create more opportunities, new opportunities and new conversations? First and foremost, you should have an activity plan or we call it here a cookbook and you set right. activity goals and you want to live and die by that. 
I mean, that will get you to where you want to go. And, you know, cold calling is one of those activities. I recommend um, carving out time each day. And, you know, something that I learned is do the things you hate doing when you have the most energy, right? Mm, I so, love that. Yeah. And, and for me, um, that is the morning, right? In the afternoon, I get draggy and, and, but I love having new business calls because I come to life. I love doing that. Okay. So that's one, two, you have to have a CRM that will allow you to do the follow-up, right? So you don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and three, you have to have, um, a recycle plan meaning how many times a year do you want to be in front of this organization? And in my opinion, you never stop touching them until they become a client, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the way in which- Or you put out them. a restraining order. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, they, they you know, and, and by the way, in B2B, there's, you, you cannot be on a do not call list that I'm aware of in, in uh, I think almost all of the states, but they, they try to intimidate people. Yeah, get away. I'm going to report you to this and that. What? It's business. This is how we all go about, you know, getting business. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation is to, to, to develop a strategy individually and then within the organization and hold each other accountable to one. hitting. Yeah. yeah. Hold each other accountable one way. You know what we do here. And, you know, look, cold calling is a no business, but we look at no as, wow, we're getting closer to our yes. So we share, we have a group feed and we post on it every day. Stupid sales stuff, you know, GIFs, if somebody has an appointment, we keep the positivity level really high here. So they don't feel like they're in a silo, you know? Mm -hmm. That's important today for so, sure. So yeah. very, yeah. very important. Wow. Yeah. So th this was fantastic. Very valuable for our listeners because I'm sure many of them uh, in sales roles ha have to do some some type of, of calling. And so I think this is very, very helpful. So Nancy, just as we wrap up, how can folks um, be in touch with you, connect with you and see what it is that you offer? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Nancy Calabrese, C-A-L-A-B-R-E-S-E. -E. Uh, our website is oneofakindsales.com and we have a media page. So you take a listen to some of my fabulous podcasts, Bill and Bryn will appear soon. Um, also uh, blogs where we share a lot of information and we have some free downloads, you know, one in particular ditch the script, which may seem contrary to what we're all about, but you can find me there. Um, my direct dial 908. 879-1322. Fantastic. And we'll put links to all of those resources in the resource page that everyone can download. So thanks yeah. everyone for listening. Nancy, thank you so much thank for being you. with us, for making sales social. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and join us again for more special guest instructors bringing you marketing, sales training, and social selling strategies that will set you apart. Hit the subscribe button below to get the latest episodes from the Making Sales Social podcast. Give this video a thumbs up and comment down below on what you want to hear from us next. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play. Visit our website, socialsaleslink.com, for more information.